Now we have three chains arranged in a row and I want to find out that how many number of ways we can rearrange the three persons. So of course, we have learned permutations. We can use three box to represent the first, second and third positions. In first position, I can choose either one of them to be seated at there. After placing the first positions, we have two person left to be choose for the second positions and one left for the final positions. So the total number of ways, we can just say that is by using multiplication rules, is 3 times 2 times 1 or just 3 factorials. All together are 6 ways and these are the graphical representations. How about now, we have a circular table instead. But same things, we have 3 seats, but the difference is just in a circular shape. Then we have Adam, Bobby and Celine. So how many ways of arrangement if they are now in a circular shape? So like usual, we're going to draw it out first with three slots represented by red, yellow and green. Like usual, we say that the first portion, there are three ways to fill it up and second portion left with only two persons and third portion is going to be left with only one person. So all together, we have three factorial ways, which is six ways, right? If you do it this way, you are completely wrong. But why is it like this? Let me show to you with a graphical ways. So these are the total six ways of the linear permutation, right? We're going to transfer all the linear one into the circular shapes with the red, yellow, and green. I will focus in in A and we're going to look at the anti-clockwise directions. So the first pictures, we have A, B, and C. The second pictures, we look at A and go for anti-clockwise, we have A, B, and C. The third one is the same thing, we look at A, if we go round anti-clockwise, it's also A, B, and C. But why is that like this? Because the three persons can rotate themselves and make no changes in their arrangement. Do you see that? After Adam is Bobby, after Bobby is Celine. Same thing here. First is Adam, after that we go for Bobby, and last one is Celine. They are just rotate themselves in the circular table and make no arrangement. Meanwhile, for the Four diagrams, if you look at A, we see A, C, and B. And this one we have Adam, Celine, Bobby. And same thing, we have Adam, Celine, and Bobby. So if you look at this one, what do you realize? We realize that we have three copies of the identical arrangement. So what we're going to say that for circular permutations, we can do that the usual way. We say that, let's say we have three people that are going to rearrange themselves. And we're going to divide it by three identical copy because why? They can rearrange themselves in the rotations. Because if we have three seats, we can rotate one time, second time, and go back to the third times. So we have the identical three copies for each of the arrangement. So this is why I divided by three. It means that if now we have four people rearrange themselves in four seats, we're going to divide it by four. They're going to have the same arrangement. So as a conclusion, we can see that no matter how many people are going to rearrange themselves in a circular shape, we're going to divide it by the n people that are in the circular. But if you still remember that, n factorial means that it's a n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 and so on, right? If you divide it by n, the n and n is nicely can cut off, provided n is not 0. After simplifying, we will have n minus 1 times n minus 2 and so on, right? And now we can simplify that this thing, it just means by n minus 1 factorials. Because factorial means that it's keep on decreasing by 1 until there is only 1 left. So it means that whenever we have a circular permutations, we're going to divide it by the duplicate n copy of it. If we simplify the equations, we'll be now left with only n minus 1 factorials. So for this case, Three persons, we're going to use three minus one factorials, which is two factorials, and indeed there are only two arrangements left, which are the two unit arrangement, which is ABC and ACB. But this formula is only applied when we take care of the directions. But sometimes we don't really take care of the directions, where we assume the clockwise is same as the anti-clockwise. Imagine now. You receive a bracelet from your boyfriend or your girlfriend that looks like this. And usually you wear it on your left hand. But out of a sudden, 
you will take off the bracelet and you're going to turn it around and put it on your right hand. But in this kind of situations where we say that we don't really care about the clockwise or anti-clockwise directions. Let's say we focus in A and we say the clockwise directions is going to be A, B, C, D. How about this? If I take the anti-clockwise directions where we have A, B, C, and D, you also have A, B, C, and D. So whenever we say the clockwise is make no difference with anti-clockwise, and this is the situation where we say that we already double counting. It means that for this case, you see that if I change this one to become clockwise, I eventually have A, B, C as well. So it means that whenever we don't really care about the directions, we're going to have a double copy of the exactly same things. So we're going to divide it by two. So this situation only happened where they tell us that we don't really care about the directions, usually it's in a bracelet or a necklace. So let's go for some of the representations of a graphical way. So let's say we have four seats now and four people, which is Kumar, Nora, Tony, and Joyce. Let's have some of a tracking way. We're going to track Kumal with clockwise. So Kumal, Joyce, Tony, and Nora. So people start feel curious about why can't I use anti-clockwise to satisfy your curious? I'm going to do anti-clockwise as well, which is Kumal, Nora, Tony, and Joyce. So this is the first arrangement that we see, right? How about now I turn it? So essentially, it made no difference because why? It's the same thing, you see that? Kumar, Nora, Tony, and Joyce. They just rotate themselves. So this is the second time that we see the same things. How about now we rotate again? This is the third time which is the same arrangement. And then we turn again. This is the fourth time it's the same arrangement and now Kumar go back to its arrangement. So this is why we say that it depends on how many states is available. They can rotate and serve by n number of ways depends on how many peoples are there. So four peoples, we have four exactly arrangement. If there are five peoples now, we have five exactly same arrangement for each permutations. So this is why we need to divide it by n. So how to fix these problems? Eventually we can fix this problem by fix one of the seat as our reference. So let's say Kumar is the first to arrive at the restaurant. So Kumar is sitting here. So now we can say that we have one way to choose for the first position. After replacing the first positions, the leftover three persons can choose the seats all by themselves. So for this position, we have three ways to choose. Let's say we choose Nora, and now we leave only two persons. So for this seat, we have two ways to choose. And the one last one is going to be only one way to choose. So we can say that the total number of way is going to be one for Kumal. So the rest is just three times two times one. This is essentially just say that it's one is fixed as a reference times the three person left over can choose whichever they like. It's going to be one times three factorials is going to be six unique arrangement. So this is how we do for circular arrangement. For people that is still not convinced, now we're going to do one by one. So we're going to fix one person first, which is Kumar. So let's say we're going to look at anti-clockwise first. So let's press Kumar, Nora, Tony, and then Joyce. So this is the first position. And now we're going to do for clockwise as well. Kumar, Joyce, Tony, and Nora. And now we're going to start to permute and to show you all of the possible arrangement. Where we always keep Kumar at the same positions. And this is how we track the clockwise and anti-clockwise. And after we rotate all of the possible ways, what you realize is, if we we're going to count, we say, hey, this is 12 ways, right? But eventually, we realize that the clockwise and anti-clockwise, they have the exactly same copy. It means that we don't care how we're going to do the arrangement because some people say that I, I rather choose the clockwise directions. Some people say that I rather choose the anti-clockwise. No worry. Because in the end, if even you merge the two arrangements, you only have the six unique arrangement. Do you see that? The red color, Kumar Joyce Tony Nora. Kumar Joyce Tony Nora. The yellow color is the same thing. 
So you did see that eventually they are the exactly same copy. So the formula indeed works. It's only six unique arrangement. So let's have a conclusions where we have a circular shape and we're going to arrange n number of seeds. The formula is going to be just n minus one factorials. Whenever like a blessed, when we don't care about the directions, we just need to divide it by two because the clockwise and anti-clockwise we say is the same. How many ways we can rearrange the five straight couples which consists of five boys and five girls in a circular tables. So first, we're going to draw out the table first with 10 empty seats. And these are our five couples. So we're going to look at how many ways we can rearrange the five couples if there's no condition imposed. It means that it's not necessary for the couples to be sitting together. So if we treat the five boy and five girl as just 10 different individuals. But since this is a circular arrangement, there must be one person sitting at one position as our reference point. So let's say this one boy is arriving very early. Then the nine remaining people can just rearrange themselves in the nine empty space. So we can say that there's one person that we fix times the nine person that can rearrange themselves. Or you can just use the formula which is n minus 1 factorials. So since we have 10 people, so 10 minus 1 will give us 9 factorials. This will give us the same answer in the end. But most of the times, the couples will prefer to sit together. So we're going to look at how many ways if their couple must be together. As usual, we must fix one person at one place first. So let's say there's one gentleman arriving very early to waiting for his girlfriend. So for this case, you always need to imagine that the couple, the composed of one boy and one girl, is glued together as one object. Means that we cannot separate the boy and girl as one couple. So if this boy is waiting for his girlfriend, so his girlfriend is the sitting beside him. So this is, we treat them as one couple first. Okay? So we're going to fix one couple first and the remaining four couples, so let's say this is a second, third, fourth, and fifth. So the remaining four couples can rearrange themselves. So we say that times four couples. But don't forget, each of the couple, which composed of boy and girl, can also rearrange themselves. You can imagine that you bought two tickets in the cinema and your boyfriend or your girlfriend decided to change the seat with you. So it can be boy-girl or girl-boy. So each of the couple can rearrange themselves for two factorial way. But we have how many couples? We have five couples. So the first couple, second, third, fourth, and fifth. And we can simplify this one as just two power of five. So there are going to be 768 ways to rearrange themselves. Sometimes if we have your friends, we decided to have the the boy gangs and the girls to be in one one group. So now we can think of like the five boys is glued together as one object. And now we also have the five girls must be in one object. Because we say the boy must be in one group and the girls must be in one group. We must put the first object as our reference point first. So let's say the boy is always a gentleman, the arriving first. So now we have the first boy that sit together first. So this one placement. Times, now the one group of girls is now coming in. But how many ways they can choose? Since there are five together, so they only have one position left, which is here. So we already have one way to, to arrange the girl. And don't forget, the five boys can rearrange themselves. So we can say that the five boys can rearrange themselves, but same for the girls. The five girls also can rearrange themselves. So now all together, we have this much of arrangement. How about now we say the boys and girls must alternate. It means that it can be boy, girl, boy, girls. But cannot have two boys together and we're going to have two girls that is 
together. So now we have 10 people, five boys and five girls. So let's say like usual, the boy is so gentleman that he arrived first. So if this is the boy, we say that there's one placement for the boy. And how about the remaining four boys? Then the remaining four boys can choose the seat in this four spot. Because why? There must be leaving one gap for the girls. Because must be one girl in between them and no boy must be stick together. Then we can say that the four boys can rearrange themselves. And after that, when the five girls come over, they can choose either one of the seat. So we can say that the five girls can rearrange themselves in these five remaining seats. So we times five factorials. So all together we have 2880 ways. Hey, if you have any questions or would like to see any kind of video, do leave your comments below and let me know. If you want to support us so that we could make more video like this, the simplest way is just by sharing the video with your friends. Click the like buttons and consider subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video.